Hi, I'm Steve Lund, and welcome to a new exciting video on CG Geek. If this is your first time with us, allow me to extend a personal invite to hit that subscribe button and be notified when more videos are posted. And if you've been here before, allow me to thank you for continuing to watch and enjoy. In this video, we'll be putting aside our more primitive tools like our brush and canvas, and instead be using more modern technology to create our nature scenes using 3D graphics and what kids are calling nowadays CGI. Okay. I can't keep doing this, this is hurting too much. Oh, oh, as you might have gotten the gist, we're gonna be using 3D graphics, Blender 3D specifically, to follow along with the Bob Ross tutorial and bring one of his classic paintings somewhat to life. You know what, maybe I'll keep the hair on though. Not gonna lie, it's pretty hot looking. So that's the gist of it, and I think it'll be a lot of fun to see what a Bob Ross painting would look like in 3D graphics, being able to render it from different angles or even animate it, seeing what one of his classic artworks, in this case it's going to be the island in the wilderness scene that we're gonna be following along with. So without further ado, let's send it over to Bob and see where we start. We'll use about a dozen colors of some unorthodox okay. brushes and each Okay, show. today we're using okay, yeah. Blender 2.82 a Beta. Not exactly the same, but pretty close. Okay, so Bob starts, as you do with most paintings, sort of in the very most background of the scene, and then kind of paint your layers forward. So we'll kind of replicate that in our 3D graphics. So I'm gonna use a 360 HDR, and HDR is very commonly used as it's basically a 360 panorama. So you can use it as a backdrop, but it also works to shine light into your scene and also cast shadows and reflections. So I'm just going to hdrhaven.com here, and I'm gonna pick an HDR that has a nice sort of backdrop of a sunset, as well as sort of the same sort of color that we have in the Bob Ross Island painting here. So here I've just opened up that HDR in our 3D software now and I've positioned it in the background and set it up as an environment light for our scene. Now, to the next step. <laughs> and just beat the devil out of it. We'll just really beat the devil cool. out of our pain tablet. Okay, so Bob went ahead and added the water to the scene. Some nice still water. That's really easy to achieve in 3D. All we have to do is add in a plane. I'm going to scale it up and then throw a reflective material on this. The material I'm actually going to use is one that I created in a previous tutorial over on my channel. I showed how to create waves using Blender and I created a basic ocean material in that scene. That is exactly the same material that I'll be using for this water surface. So here's our simple water material now, kind of mimicking the sky and water that Bob has already painted on his canvas. I think we're looking pretty close. Our colors are gonna be off a little bit until we kind of tweak them at the end. Here I can adjust the size of those waves a bit. I can make them extremely big or very subtle. I can also adjust the amount of reflection if I want it to be a very sharp, clear reflection. I'm gonna go with somewhere in the middle of a nice sort of shallow reflection, kind of matching what he has here. Move Moving on, Bob, we caught up. Okay, so that's super cool. Bob just painted some, painting some mountains in about a minute, and that looked dope. Now to create these mountains in our 3D software, I'm gonna use an add-on that actually comes with Blender, and it uses textures to kind of generate geometry to create things like mountains. So using this add-on, I can go ahead and just crank some of these settings up a bit bigger. And as you can see, it's just using a noise texture over my mesh here, tweaking these settings a bit to kind of match the shape and size of mountains that Bob is painting in the background of his video. And we're gonna scale these up a little bit as these are gonna be the most distant mountains. And here I'm just positioning those mountains in front of those real distant mountains to kind of give the illusion of two layers of mountain. Now I'd like to take a quick moment to give a sincere thanks to this video sponsor, Audible. When you spend hours at your desk working on art and whatnot like I do, having a good audiobook to listen to makes the work even more fun. And thanks to Audible, you can listen anywhere from any device at any time. And I'm currently listening to the Brandon Sanderson Audible exclusive Steelheart audiobook series and really enjoying it. I can totally recommend it. It's a brand new year now and no better of a time to pick that perfect audiobook that motivates you. Currently, Audible is issuing a fun challenge to all current and new members Finish three audiobooks by March 3rd and get $20 free Amazon credit. And you can start listening today with the Audible 30-day trial. Choose one audiobook, two Audible originals, absolutely free. Just visit audible.com slash cggeek or text cggeek to 500-500. That's audible.com slash cggeek or text cggeek to 500-500 for your 30-day trial. Now let's get back to work. And now I needed some distant materials for these mountains in the background. So what I did is I created a simple PBR material setup here where we use some rocks and a snow texture here. And I just kind of combine them using a little bit of a mask here 
with the pointiness node on the geometry. This allows me to pick the edges of the mesh and I'm gonna make just the edges of those the snow material. So as you can see, combining those with a mix shader kind of gives me these mountains that Bob painted in a matter of seconds. It took me a little bit longer. As you can see, as we switch to the camera view, we have those mountains already reflecting in our water, which is already kind of matching Bob's painting. Now for the mist, I'm just adding in a short rectangle of a cube, as you can see here. And then I added a simple volumetric material to this cube, picking a color here that matches the color tones that Bob is using in his painting. And here's a little rendered preview of what it's looking like with that volumetric fog being added to it. I just have a simple gradient texture here to kind of be able to gradually have that fog get less dense as it gets higher up on the mesh. Now volumetrics is something that is really slow for 3D software to render as it's a lot to calculate. So what I'm doing is I'm using an RTX NVIDIA card. And if you enable optics in the Blender user preferences, this is a new feature that's just come to Blender. You can use those RTX cores in the new RTX NVIDIA GPUs to really accelerate your workflow, oftentimes up to twice as fast. Now these are a little closer. Oh, You're seeing a little more detail. Okay, little time more out, Bob. You can't do that that fast. So for these pine trees that Bob is effortlessly painting into the background, it's a little bit more work to do with 3D graphics. So my plan for these pine trees is I shot a few pine branches on a white background that I could remove in Photoshop. And then as you see here, I'm left with just the pine branches and a transparent background. Here I've just been duplicating them, making a larger branch out of that small branch and 3D, along with a little bit of a branch stem here that I just extruded out and threw a little branch texture on. Now what I'm also doing is I'm making sure that I'm pulling them downwards as his pine trees are really kind of sagging in those branches. Then I just created a simple cylinder here with a basic texture on it for a bark material. Then I'm going to use particle instancing, which allows me to take those branches that I made and add them multiple times to our scene, randomly generating them across our object here. And here you can see what it looks like once I add those on. It just took a little bit of tweaking and I had to define a few things like where the branches should appear on the tree. Then using a weight paint group, I was also able to tell Blender to scale these branches down towards the top so we have more of a realistic growing pine tree and once I had this set up I was able to apply those particle systems and then use this as another particle system for another instance group for those pine trees in the background of our scene. But there you can see we have some of those dark pine trees along the horizon line of our scene. And then with that fog turned on, you can really get the contrast separating those pine trees from the mountain. And it's matching Bob's painting pretty closely now. Imagination is, it's, it's like any other muscle in your body. The more you practice, the better it I like that. Imagination is just like any other muscle in your body. That's good. That's quality stuff, Bob. So now that we already have that pine tree model for the distant trees, I'm just going to be duplicating that and kind of lining them up in the same scene, scale and rotation to what Bob is placing his trees in. Now you see here, Bob's painting reflections. Reflections is something we don't even have to worry about anymore because in 3D, the reflections are now calculated automatically by that reflective material that we set up. So as you can see here, we already have the reflections of those trees in the water. So we're one step ahead of Bob. So I wasn't feeling like I was getting enough of those highlights on my trees, just using the HDR for lighting as Bob kind of had in his scene. Even though this might be more realistic, I want to match Bob's painting as close as possible. So to kind of match the highlights that Bob is painting on the pine tree, I went ahead and added that sun lamp and that kind of allowed those materials to pop a little bit more. You get a little bit more green in those pine trees and it matched his work a little bit closer. I live down here, right down in his little foots. That's so crazy. Okay, so we have some catching up to do to kind of match what Bob is doing now. We need to make a little island. And so at this point, we need some new greenery to kind of match the bushes that he just painted in a matter of seconds. So for this, I created some little sort of tree-like bushes. And if you guys are curious on how I created these, I actually did a one minute tutorial. There'll be a link up on the description there on how I did that. These are just some very simple little meshes using the same technique that I did in that one minute video tutorial. And yeah, these are gonna work for some of the greenery on that island. I also created some without any branches on them to kind of match what he'll do for the dead sort of branches there on the tree. So here I just duplicated a bit of that mountain mesh that I already created for the background, placed it over my water here as a little bit of an island, and then using some more particles to instance those little bushes that I showed you guys that I created there. So then we have an effect looking something like this. We're getting some of those green sort of nature like bushes on a little island underneath those pine trees that are kind of drooping down. Except Bob also painted some of that shoreline, some of those like waves and sand that you would have along 
along the shore. And as you can see, I'm still missing all that. So to achieve this, I'm using a texture of clouds inside of the texture painting tools with Blender, and then using a white material here. I'm just gonna go around and kind of paint some white textures around the base of the island. This is gonna kind of look like that sand slash waves along the shoreline of the island. Then all I had to do was take that texture that I painted into my material and add it to my color material for my ocean. And then all I have to do is connect that up. And as you can see, now that I add that over the top of the water, we kind of have that white sort of sand slash foam slash water along the shorelines of our island here. And as you can see, it definitely helps kind of separate that island from the water and gives you the same kind of look that Bob painted on his scene. So one of the ways we're gonna give this little island a little bit more life is I went back to one of my old classic videos on how to photo scan 3D objects. And I had photo scanned an old stump. And I just grabbed that model that I created in that old video here, as you can see this giant stump, and just placed it nice and small on our little island here. And that just gives a little bit of extra realism to have some of that nature sitting on that little island. This is something that was photo scanned in my backyard. So it's kind of cool to be including some of those little Easter eggs in the scene. So here Bob's kind of painting the final layer to the scene, the foreground, as you could say. And as you can tell, he kind of works from the very background of the scene all the way up to the foreground, which is kind of different for me because when I'm working in 3D, generally I work on what's in the foreground and then worry about the background later. So this process of creating it in 3D, following along with the tutorial is a little bit backwards for what I'm used to, but it's actually pretty fun to kind of mix up the workflow here. Take the hook carefully out of his mouth and put a band-aid on him, a little CPR, and CPR? add him on the P2 and put him back in the water. <laughs> you give him CPR to a fish? But after adding a few of these objects to kind of fill out the scene with a little bit more detail, you can see we were getting close, but I still didn't have the sort of depth to the scene that Bob can paint because of the background being a lighter color and the foreground being a darker color. So what I did for this is I used a similar method that again, I taught in a recent tutorial on when I created forests in Blender, and that is using a basic noise texture on a plane and instancing it multiple times across our scene. As you can see, I did right here. This plane just has a very faint sort of noise texture on it, as you can kind of see here in the render. But once I put it instance multiple times across the render, you can see we get that low hanging fog that Bob kind of painted along the water and along the horizon of the trees there. Adding in that low hanging fog with that texture being instanced multiple times really added the depth and realism to the scene. As you can tell, it really worked to kind of separate our little island here from the distant pine trees, as well as separate even the foreground trees here from the little island. And this is what really pulled my 3D render to look a lot closer to what Bob Ross is painting has been looking like here. All these little details and tips and tricks that Bob adds to kind of finish out your scene are so cool. I mean, I've never even painted something like this close to this in my life, yet I find it really enjoyable to watch. Bob is just a legend. He's just pretty much the greatest ever and seems like a really nice guy. So here is our render straight out of our 3D software blender without any rendering or anything. And it looks pretty cool, but the colors don't quite match what Bob's do. So what I did at this point is I fired up Lightroom and I'm gonna bring this image into it and make just a few adjustments to kind of pull the colors a little closer to Bob's finished painting. So adjusting the tonal curves a little bit, I was able to kind of make those colors pop a little bit more and then also increase the exposure of the overall image a little bit more, gave it some more contrast, increased the clarity a bit, as well as gave it some vibrance, as well as kind of bringing down some of the highlights and bringing up some of the shadows just to give you a little bit of detail. I also kind of tweaked the white balance here to kind of pull the colors to be a bit of a cooler color to kind of match the overall tone of Bob's finished image, as well as giving it a little bit more green. But there's my finished result, guys, compared to Bob Ross's finished painting. This was a ton of fun, though. One of the most enjoyable things for me to create in 3D is often nature scenes. I've done a lot of them in the past, but never have I followed Bob Ross doing one of them. And so this was a lot of fun. Bob Ross is basically the king 
of nature scenes. So working off his inspiration and bringing it into 3D was a ton of fun. Actually, I think something like this could be really cool animated because now that we have it in 3D, I could technically render this out as an animation, maybe kind of a swooping animation pulling past those pine trees in on the mountains. So yeah, what do you guys think? Would you like to see an animated version of this scene? It would take me a bit of time to render, but it'd be something I'd be willing to do. And let me know if you want to see it with a like on the video. If this video reaches 10,000 likes, I'll go ahead and render an animated sequence of this painted Bob Ross rendering. And uh, yeah, I would share it over on my CG Geeks Instagram and Twitter accounts. There'll be links in the description for those. So yeah, if this video reaches 10,000 likes, guys, we'll get an animated sequence render of this. And again, I'd like to thank Audible for sponsoring this video. Visit audible.com slash cggeek or text cggeek to 500-500 to get you a free 30-day trial of Audible. There'll be links in the description. But I'll do it for this video, guys. I hope you had some fun and enjoyed it, and I'll see you all in a future video. Bye-bye! We got this. We got this. We're cool. Cool. Bob. Bob Ross.